Namaste, everyone. Welcome to another edition of N5D Facebook Live. I'm your host, Greg Prescott from N5D.com. <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about false flags, the matrix, shadow bands, and consciousness. And hi to everyone that's joining me, to Carrington, Joyce, Louine. Kristen, Athena, Karen, Natalie, Creek, Shakti, Joy, Sean, Mary. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining me on this N5D Facebook Live. Uh, before I get started, um, on my last N5D Facebook Live, I was talking about the Mandela effect. And I had some guy make a comment on my N5D Facebook page. <laughs> What happened was we went out, Michelle and I went out to uh, dinner at Captain Kurt's and there's really nothing to drink there other than crap. So I ended up ordering what I thought was Mountain Dew, which I've had there before and they didn't have it then. And the waitress that I spoke to who said she had worked there for six years said they've never carried it. Michelle's my witness. I've had it there numerous times. Anyway, this person on the N5D Facebook page starts giving me crap about my choice of Mountain Dew. You know, it's not like I'm guzzling that can by can every day. We we're out to dinner. I ordered something and that was what I ordered. Plain and simple. It was an experience anyway. It really doesn't matter. So I ended up banning him. But, you know, <laughs> the thing is, is that, you know, if people, I have a post on my personal Facebook page and it's called 20 things you might not know about me and included in those 20 things are that I eat meat. Yeah. I try to keep it organic, but I do eat meat. I smoke cigarettes and they're organic as well. But you know, I, I, I listen to hard rock. I play hard rock on guitar. It doesn't affect my vibration or who I am. My third eye is still wide open. I still get visions and, uh, premonitions of things that haven't happened yet. And I'll be talking about a few of those later on. None of this stuff has affected me <laughs> spiritually. Um, and you know, to those people who want to judge, please don't put me on a pedestal in la catch a la keen. I am another you. And chances are, you know, this person probably has lives in a wooden house that was created by deforestation of trees, probably has some kind of leather shoes or some kind of leather in his car. You know, don't judge. It's, it's just not the right thing to do. Anyway, moving on. I'm going to start out with um, what the matrix is pushing out in front of us. And it's really fascinating to see how all of this is unfolding. Now, ultimately, creator, source, whatever you want to call this infinite being, is experiencing consciousness through us and our conscious co-creation through us. And this person's views of everything that we're experiencing is neither good nor bad. It's all about the experience. Ultimately, none of this is real. None of this is real. It's simply our consciousness experiencing this reality and co-creating with one another to have a shared experience. For example, you know, if you're to listen outside, you might hear a car go by as I'm hearing right now, uh, there's a car going by and it's, it could be one of two things that I'm experiencing right now. It could be another conscious co-creator who decided, you know, I'm here on Siesta Key in Florida to experience Siesta Key and is just driving by sharing this experience with me. Or it could be one of the background people that Dolores Cannon spoke about. Now, I'm not sure if you're familiar with these background people, but they're basically just filling space. They're not even real either. Not to say that we're real, but they're, they're not even consciousness experiencing this. For example, I was driving down Tamiami Trail here in Sarasota, and it's a three lane road where the left lane you would assume would be for the faster drivers. 
and there was this long line of cars in the left-hand lane, and there's about half as many in the right hand in, in the middle lane, and like nobody in the right hand lane. So I go in the right hand lane, and I'm like, Phew. I just zoom away, passing all these people, these background people that were in the left-hand passing lane. I don't know if you guys have experienced background people or just wondering whether, you know, is this person real? Are they, or are they a background person? You know, if, if, if you've experienced that, make some comments over here because people are going to not only read your comments, but they're also going to comment to you. And this is a great way to uh, develop family here on Facebook. Also, while you're saying hi, and I'm saying hi to Heidi, Leanne, Victoria, Louise, Maria, and Auntie, um, tell me where you're from because that's another great way of creating family and you might find some people that are in your same area or city that you can connect with. So put your location up there. So what's happening is in this matrix, we have our reality and created realities. For example, like the TV, the, the mainstream shithole media, <laughs> you know, that's trying to create our reality right now by giving us this, this narrative and this agenda that they're pushing on us and acting as if it's all real, which obviously none of this is real, but they're trying to create an agenda because our thoughts and intentions create reality that their agenda is what is, is real. And because we're thinking it, we're, we're putting that intention out there that it, it has the possibility of being real. So this is what happens when you watch TV, especially any mainstream shithole media. So th that reality is absolute utter bullshit, fabricated lies. You don't want that. Here's something really interesting. Excuse me. <laughs> Merriam Webster has a word of the day and I was brought, this was brought to my attention by Michelle Walling. Today's word of the day, actually yesterday's word of the day. I don't know if you can see it, but it's demiurge. I found that word of the day to be really interesting. So this is the definition of demiurge. Okay. It's a noun. One that is autonomous, one that is an uh, autonomous creative force or decisive power. In the Platonic school of philosophy, the demiurge is a deity who fashions in the physical world in the light of eternal ideas. In the Timaeus, Plato credits the demiurge with taking pre-existing materials of chaos and arranging them in accordance with the models of eternal forms. Now, we all know that at the top, at the highest levels of Freemasonry, they have the motto, Ordo Ab Chao, which means order out of chaos. Let me continue here. Nowadays, the word demiurge can refer to the individual or group chiefly responsible for a creative idea, like the narrative on the mainstream media news, as in the Demiurge behind the new hit TV show, Demiurge derives via late Latin from Greek Demiurgos, meaning artisan or one with special skills. The Demi part of the word comes from the Greek noun demos, meaning people. The second part comes from the word for worker, ergon. Despite its appearance, it's unrelated to the word urge. So you have these worker people with special skills. Now that could be the fry cook at McDonald's. That could be a webmaster of N5D. It could be any one of us. Um, we are the, the working class. And ultimately, as we all know, slavery never ended because as long as we have money, we're all financial slaves to a broken system of fiat currency that's backed by nothing and worth nothing. So we need to get beyond that. Uh, you know, I've written articles about that. One of my favorite articles on N5D is if there was no such thing as money. And that hypothetically puts out the question, if there was no such thing as money, what would you be doing with your life? You guys can answer right here too, because I'd love to read your answers when I get done. Now, I asked my mom that one time. Mom, 
if there was no such thing as money, what would you be doing with your life? She goes, that's preposterous. What do you mean if there was no such thing as money? We have to have money, blah, 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 blah. She couldn't even get into that mindset. What if there was no such thing as money? Now here's my answer. If there was no such thing as money, I would have an orchard and I'd plant like some kind of citrus fruit that doesn't need a lot of attention, um, oranges or grapefruits or something like that. And I'd put a sign out front saying, help yourself. And if you know somebody that's hungry, grab a little for them too. Now, a lot of you already know that I was a child and family therapist for at-risk youth. And uh, you know, that's what my master's degree is in. And I would also do something to work with children, helping them find their true divine reason for being here. Because I still have that passion for working with kids. Um, my daughter and I are both like kid magnets. We could be on the beach and children will just run up to us for no reason. <laughs> I think they see our aura or something like that. It's like, oh, pretty aura, pretty aura. I, I don't know what it is. But if there was no such thing as money, uh, that's what I would do. Let me know what you would do here, too, in your comments. Okay, so the next word, this is today's word. So demiurge was yesterday's word. Today's word is intrepid. You'll see where I'm going on this. Okay, intrepid is an adjective. It describes something. Uh, the definition, characterized by resolute fearlessness, fortitude, and endurance. You need not be afraid to find out the origins of today's word, although its history does include fear. Of course it does. Intrepid derives from the Latin word intrepidus, itself formed from the combination of the prefix in, meaning not, and trepidus, meaning alarmed, not alarmed. Makes sense. Other relatives of trepidus in English include trepidation and trepidatious, as well as trepid, which actually predates intrepid and means fearful. So, fearlessness and the demiurge. You can look at things from two perspectives on just about anything, because we have the positive and the negative polarities. The demiurge, the reason why they probably put this on there, is the demiurge is what they're trying to create for us. Like I said, through the mainstream media, through television, radio, magazines, and stuff like that, they're trying to create our reality and putting it out there in front of our face. And as long as we put energy into it, it's helping them create that reality. And Intrepid, being fearlessness, fortitude, and endurance, um, they have a lot to be intrepid about at this point in time because there's a lot of shit that's gonna be hitting the fan. And their demiurge is going to be changing really quick. And it's us that are the ones that are going to be intrepid. It's all backfiring. Now, I'm wondering why they actually use those words, demiurge and intrepid, because it seems like at the top, this is a huge corporation, Mer Merriam-Webster Dictionary. It's a huge corporation. And I'm wondering if they were intentionally told told by maybe the government or something like that that these are the words you need to use and perhaps I wonder if they may even be code words that need to be sent out uh, specifically chosen by the powers that be now Merriam Webster's is similar to Twitter I just saw a video where it was a Project Veritas video where the government was basically telling Twitter who to ban, what keywords to look for. And uh, it makes me wonder if the government's telling Twitter what you can say, what you can't say, what can be banned, what's bannable, and stuff like that, why, why wouldn't they have any kind of say in what Merriam-Webster is putting as their word of the day? So it's very, you know, I'm very curious about, especially the word demiurge being used as their word for the day. So, you know, this actually all ties into being shadow banned. Um, that, that video on shadow bans by Twitter is really fascinating. And I'll be talking about shadow bans a little bit later. Uh, right now, I want to talk a little bit more about, like, our dreams. Our dreams, do you ever feel like your dreams are more 
like real life and you when you wake up it's more like the dream does that make sense it just seems your dreams seem so much more real than reality while you're awake our waking life is basically the dream and vice versa and it gets all convoluted in between for example here here's a, a dream I had and I've shared this before, but for those of you who haven't heard it, it's really quite fascinating. I dreamt that I was in this council of, it was like 12, maybe 13 beings. And we were standing in a circle. And it was on a spaceship. But uh, we were standing in a circle, and inside the circle was this hologram of something that we were co-creating through telepathy with one another. And somebody would come up with an idea and it would add to this hologram. And everybody through telepathy would go, oh, my God, that's amazing. But what, somebody else would say, but what if we did this? And they added to that hologram and it made it even better. And we're all like, oh, it's even better. Completely amazing. And we just kept going back and forth, creating whatever it was through conscious co-creation. That's where we're heading. <laughs> Maybe sooner than you think. And I'll be getting into that a little bit later. What if this consciousness that we're experiencing right now that's not real. What if it's basically a test run for the new earth? What if all we're doing right now through our consciousness, uh, experiencing and co-creating with one another is really deciding what do we want and what don't we want? What do you like? What do you dislike? It, it's okay to dislike certain things like, okay, I don't like chemtrails. I don't like GMOs. I don't like fluoride in my water. And some people will say, well, by not liking it, you're putting that energy into it. And screw that. It's just about the experience. And that's all it is. It's all about the experience. What am I experiencing? Certain things in my life I don't want. <laughs> I don't want government. Matter of fact, I think that what we should have is a, a council of elders. I have an article about this on N5D. It would be the perfect idea to replace government. Get a council of elders um, who are completely transparent. I would volunteer for this job and I'd work for free but have them completely transparent. And you can vote on them every week if you want. And uh, they, have to, they have to work in humanity's best interest, period. So you might say, okay, well, what did you do this week? Well, I developed a, a free energy system. I went into the archives of the suppressed inventions and I got Tesla's free energy system out. And we're putting that together to give the world free energy. Okay, what did you work on? Okay, well, you know, Stanley Meyer's car got suppressed that the car that could go from coast to coast in the United States on 23 gallons of water. Let's get that going before we can actually, you know, in the meanwhile, while we're working on getting, you know, uh, teleportation and, you know, our own personal space cars going, we're going to be working on that and so on and so forth. That's what I think we should have instead of a government. And ultimately you could have a, uh, like replace the United Nations with a United Council of Elders, you know? So we're eventually what we, you would have is all these countries, coming together and sharing their ideas with one another. And uh, eventually you would take down the borders because of that, because we're all working together for the same common interests on this planet. And that brings up another thing too. I think that we should all have one common language. And I don't care what it is. It could be Russian, it could be Spanish, it could be Lithuanian. Let's just agree on one language so we can communicate with one another from all these other uh, countries in the United States because we all are connected. So I want to talk a little about false flags. As a matter of fact, right now there's an active shooter in a Boston mall. I was just seeing that on the news feed. And of course, this is probably some person that is on Prozac, that's probably MK Ultra, that there's those in power are sending out there, you know, to create this distraction. So look over here. All this shit's going on over here. And we see that time and time and time again. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, there's a person, uh, his, he goes by the name of Q Anon. I have an article uh, written by Nikki Colombo on N5D. I did an addendum at the end of that that lists a couple people uh, that you can follow on Twitter. One is um, Q and one is uh, this person that's known by as B. And uh, they both post a lot of amazing information. Q was the one that recently said yesterday 
to beware of um, a major false flag coming up this week. Why? Because those uh, the Uranium One bullshit deal under Obama and ran through Hillary um, is the, and the indictments are coming out now. I think there's 11 indictments already and more to come, and the shit's going to hit the fan. So what's going to happen? You know, the whole the Clintons, the Obamas. Matter of fact. Uh, what's his face? Bill Clinton is in Hawaii. Huma Aberdeen is in Hawaii. Obama's in Hawaii. What do you think they're talking about right now? They're shitting bricks is what they're doing. They're all shitting bricks. Um, and the shit's hitting the fan right now. So um, this is part of the awakening. There's going to be so many things that are going on in the next couple months that it's really going to shake our reality as what we know. People are going to be indicted, uh, sent off to jail, sent off to Guantanamo Bay. I mean, famous people, actors, actresses, politicians. Um, it's going to rock people's worlds. Uh, priests, Pope, maybe. Who knows? Um, it's going to tear everything down right now. And I've written about this and about uh, Pluto and Capricorn. I've got a number of articles on N5D about Pluto and Capricorn. But getting back to these false flags, apparently there was one that was thwarted yesterday at the uh, NFL American football game between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Apparently there was some kind of assassination plan to uh, knock off some players in the game and apparently that got thwarted. Uh, now this guy Q, he, he said specifically, he said, beware of major false flag attempts this week. He's the same person that, was, that mentioned uh, DEFCON 1 last week and a lot of people threw their hands in the air saying, oh my God, what are you talking about DEFCON 1? You know, it's, it, because he gives all these cryptic messages, it was really hard to decipher. But as it turned out, there was a false flag um, bullshit uh, ballistic missile uh, that was allegedly launched at Hawaii uh, last week. And this was after Q posted DEFCON 1. Of course, that's a DEFCON 1 um, situation. So he knows things are, are going to happen before they happen. And he's giving us warnings about what, what to look out for because he sees, he knows the plan of those in power and he's the one that's helping take down all these people. So what we end up seeing is that there's usually a false flag. Anytime we start getting close to the truth, you, if you look back at like the summer of love back in 67. Now, I was only six years old at the time, but I can tell you what's locked into my cellular memory. That feeling of unconditional love, just the love that was in the air. Anyone that was around in 1967 during the summer of love can attest to that feeling. And we'll, we'll never forget it. But of course, what happened, you had that, was it the Kent State in incident where there were shooters there as well, and it just brought everybody down and, you know, bring on the, the Vietnam, Vietnam War and you know, we had this movement going on back then with the summer of love where we were heading in the right direction. Then these false flags come in. The difference now is that we're already seeing through all this crap that's going on, like that incident that happened in Las Vegas, which was utter crap and staged. Um, and, and what's happening right now, you know, we're going to probably have some kind of false flag attempts because of this Uranium One deal that's going on. So don't be surprised. Um, hopefully no one gets injured and uh, hopefully even more so they uh, get thwarted before they even happen. So I've made some posts on being shadow banned on N5D or on Facebook, excuse me. And this is the definition of shadow ban, if you, if you don't know. Shadow ban is the act of blocking a user or their content from an online community such as such that the user does not realize that they've been banned. So you can still post away and think that your posts are reaching people. They're going nowhere. They're basically going into the void, you know, the, the pit of misery or <laughs> where the Facebook administrators are going, pit of misery, dilly dilly, you know? They could give a rat's ass about us. They'd, you know, okay, well, this guy's talking about consciousness and spirituality, pit of misery for him, you know? So this is, what's going on with a lot of people. And I made that post, I included a couple of videos on there and uh, so many more people have came, uh, have commented saying the same thing that they've experienced the same exact thing that their posts aren't getting seen by anyone. Sometimes they'll post something and it's gone. I just posted a video today of what's happening. So I post the link into my Facebook page, hit post and then 
nothing. And I have to either reload the page or refresh the page or click on my name to actually see the post I posted. It was never like that before. But the true origin of this happened for me about 2014 when I started noticing this. At the time, I had probably around 400,000 Facebook followers on my N5D Facebook page. And I posted an article on uh, the Pluto in Capricorn and what's going to be happening. And I posted several articles about that. And I don't think the powers that be appreciated that because, well, let me preface this by saying a little about Pluto and Capricorn. Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008. Pluto's known as the destroyer and will tear down everything that's not in humanity's best interests. The last time that Pluto was in Capricorn was during both the French and American revolutions in the 1700s. So what it's going to do is tear down money, government, and religion. They don't like that message. It's the truth, and we're already seeing that happening. <laughs> Excuse me. Matter of fact, in 2008, here in the United States, we had the banking collapse, where all these banks collapsed except the too big to fail slash jail banks. And uh, at the time, I, I made a, a video on YouTube. I think it's something like uh, banking collapse announces the beginning of the golden age because the dollar should have died then. The U.S. dollar, you know, it's, it's fiat currency backed by nothing, worth nothing. And it should have died back then. Matter of fact, the, the Fed, the Federal Reserve, their charter ran out, ran out in, at the end of 2012. And here they are still printing that, that fake currency and fiat currency. And, you know, uh, you look at the, the stock market, which is at an all-time high. But yet, if you look at silver and gold, they're being suppressed big time. People have already came out, admitted that they're being suppressed, basically got a little slap on the hand and said, that's okay, keep, keep doing what you're doing. From what I understand, silver, um, there's about as much silver as there is gold on this planet. As a matter of fact, from what people say, there's actually less silver than there is gold because silver is getting used so much faster than gold. Other people are saying that the actual value of silver should be somewhere around $1,000 an ounce. Right now it's going for like $17.28 an ounce. So they're manipulating the markets uh, on that. Because Pluto and Capricorn is tearing down money, government, and religion, those are three things that a lot of people who aren't awakened will have a hard time understanding. And um, it's going to take us, you know, the awakened ones, you're going to have people. My parents will be some of those people, um, especially in the religion department where my parents are both Christian. And uh, they're, they're going to they're gonna have a pretty tough time with what's going to go uh, go on especially when some of these pedophile priests are arrested, the Roman Catholic Church collapses. This could be a blessing because if their net worth was shared with everybody on the planet, that would create instant abundance for everyone. Um, but the bottom line is that, you know, they're really suppressing information. Anytime I post anything with an N5D link on, on Facebook, it goes into the void. And a lot of people are missing stuff that, you know, you're, you can only get on N5D. There's things that I've talked about, like the, the three uh, waves that are coming. Um, not the ones that Dolores Cannon talked about, about the three waves of volunteers, but these tidal waves that are coming. The first two um, tidal waves that I saw in, in this dream um, converge. And that, that you'll know exactly when that happens. When these two waves converge, everyone will know. And the last one is like a cleansing wave, but these are just waves of energy. They're not actually waves of water because water is a mutable energy. It could be anything. So, you know, I have an article about that. I've got a video about that on N5D, but because I'm getting shadow banned, that's stuff that won't go out. There's another thing I had a vision that I think is the event. And it's where this white light floods the planet and as soon as that happens, all you feel is this unconditional love to a magnitude that you can't describe on this planet. And what I tell people is that to imagine something that you love more than anything else in the world, magnify that by a million times, and I'm underestimating it, but that's the kind of unconditional love that you'll feel. All third-dimensional worries are gone. Money, government, politics, religion, that's all gone. 
the only thing he feels is unconditional love. Now, this is a little bit different than what they're talking about with uh, Corey Good and David Wilcock being the solar flash, because there's still some kind of, it seems like some kind of form of government and council and stuff like that. Um, but I can just only tell you what I'm experiencing. Another thing that I keep getting to tell you guys over and over and over again, I hope this word keeps getting out because it's so important to love, to forgive, to express gratitude, to, to ground and to maintain a high vibration right now. Those things are so important right now for everyone to do. But the problem is, because I'm being shadow banned, this information isn't getting out to people, along with all the other posts that I'm putting out, out on Facebook. Um, as a matter of fact, here are some, I, I made a post on shadow bands, and here's some of the people that commented on it. Uh, JC said, it's funny you say that, because when I started visiting your website, I was seeing articles that weren't shared on Facebook for N5D. I thought it was interesting how some articles were shared and not the others. Sonia Galbraith said that, yes, this is, this is the first post of yours that I've seen for months on my feed. Uh, Mia says, I don't get your new posts on my news feed, too. Rosemary said, I rarely see your posts anymore. They simply stop showing up on my feed. Elaine said that, I've been wondering where you were. No posts or very few the last six months have been received from you. I miss you. Oh, thank you. Uh, Corey McCaffrey said, yep, I rarely see N5D posts, but I see yours once in a while, meaning my, on my personal Facebook page. Then I think, hmm, I haven't seen anything from N5D for a while and have to go back and stalk the page and see what I missed. And then finally, this is one that's so telling about what's going on about shadow bands. Steve McQueen said, hi, Greg. I like and follow your page, but I never see your posts anymore. Plus, another strange thing that happened. When I type in 5D in my search bar, it doesn't even come up. I literally have to scroll down for ages until I find the page. So that's, that's what's going on with... Uh, Facebook and the shadow bands. Now, I don't know if you guys saw that that video. Uh, it was a Jimmy Church interview. You're we supposed to inter interview uh, Corey Good, but Corey had the Ascension flu. The same thing I went through in December. You know, he also had that 103 degree temperature, and he ended up going to the hospital for it. But uh, David Wilcock ended up uh, guest uh, subbing on that show, and. Uh, it was pretty interesting, some of the things that he said. Um, he was mentioning how DNA was gathered and mixed from numerous species around the, the galaxy to create all these different races that we have here on our planet. And by mixing all this DNA together, it basically supercharged us for ascension. So we could jump to a higher level of evolution through this solar flash, which might still be the same thing that I saw, that, that white flash of light. Uh, it could be same, could be different, I'm not sure. But he added that this is going to happen no later than 2023, which is the end of Pluto and Capricorn when all this shit's going to be tumbling down, money, government, and religion. So the coincidence on that was pretty uh, amazing. Now, getting back to the, the shadow ban, I hate asking anyone for everything. I made a post about that, and I think a lot of light workers are in the same boat. You know, we, we would do anything for anyone, but when it comes for us having to ask anyone for anything, we don't do it. I, I know, like, at the last move I had, I basically threw my back out because I couldn't ask anyone to help me move. What we need to do is share. And I'm not just talking about in 5D any spiritual website that you like out there, get out and share those links as much as you can because Facebook is censoring us and uh, we need to get all of our information out there. And like I said, not just in 5D, any website that you really enjoy that's putting out a positive message. Uh, we have to stand together united. Also, you can find other similar platforms. I've been actually um, ex uh, exploring a couple different places. You can find in 5D on mewe.com, M-E-W-E.com. And it's actually in for the first name, 5D for the last name. I couldn't get it all together in one on that website. But um, I'm also on Twitter as 2012 Greg. But as we know, Twitter does the shadow bans too. And there's a, a website called Steemit, 
S T E E M I T, and you can find me as in 5D, one word. Uh, you can also subscribe to the N5D daily newsletter. You can find that on the right-hand side of the page if you're on a laptop or a PC. Um, it's upper right-hand side of the page. If you're on a cell phone, just scroll down to the end of the article, and right below that you should see a link for uh, a subscription to the da um, a daily newsletter. So I just want you guys to remember that none of this is real. You know, Despite all this stuff, as real as it seems, it's just the experience. And what we're doing is we are co-creating um, through our consciousness and sharing these co-creations with one another, creating the reality that we do want and the reality that we do want to see. So that is the importance of, despite none of this being real, of why we're doing what we're doing. Because we are deciding what we do want and what we don't want for the new earth. And it's all boiling down to what is it you like and what is it you don't like. Um, as a matter of fact, there's one last thing, or a couple actually, actually things I want to um, talk about, too. The uh, age of Pisces was the basically the age of, where is it? Right there, right here, the age of Pisces. Um, that transitioned into the age of Aquarius, where we're at right now. Pisces was the age of Jesus. And that's over with. And where we're heading, this is going to be a tough one for people to swallow. You don't need a savior. You don't. You are your savior. You are the one you have been waiting for. Even whether you believe in Jesus or not, what he said was, you can do all I can do and more. This is what you can do. You are going to do that and more. It's an interesting picture here. Well, you know, this is... Actually, let me go back a little here. The precession of the equinoxes goes backwards. So what we're looking at, like in the, in the Bible, it was hidden. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, we had the, uh, the golden calf, which was the age of Taurus. Then we had uh, the blowing of the ram's horn, which was the uh, age of Aries. Then we had uh, when Jesus fed the masses with two, uh, two fish. That was the age of Pisces. Now we're transitioning into the age of Aquarius, and that's the water bearer. Now, here's a pretty interesting picture. Of course, we all know the water bearer as something like that. It's always a man, and that's when Jesus said, you know, follow the man bearing the pitcher of water to the house if you want to be like me, blah, blah, blah. Kind of looks like him, the water bearer. And remember, because we're going backwards in precession, so... Going back to Aquarius, the water bearer, this is pretty interesting. So going backwards, you have the ram's horn, you have Pisces, now you have the water bearer too, hidden in plain sight. So I also mentioned um, recently about, this is really interesting. My temperature since December 22nd hasn't gone above 98 degrees, and I track it every day. My temperature, usually around, I don't know, 97.6. It's been as low as 97.1. Um, but what I'm wondering is if we're turning into crystalline bodies right now, we, here on Siesta Key, you guys have heard about me talking about it. We have this uh, quartz crystal sand. And even in the middle of summer, you can be on the sand and it's cool to the feet. So if crystalline cools you down, I'm wondering if that's what's happening with our bodies. Another strange thing is, too, while I sleep, I have that strange body anomaly that my temperature goes up when I sleep. And I put that out there, too. And so many other people are commenting on that as well, saying the same thing's happening to them. So we're seeing a lot of people who's at night, their temperature is rising. But when they take their temperature, it's actually well below normal. Is this happening to you? So I'm gonna, I think I'm going to leave it off at that right now. There's some really big changes that are going to be coming on. Uh, those that are in power are going to be trying to pull some false flags on us. So... Keep your eyes open. Be aware that you know we're, we are in control of this. That what they're trying to do is make us look off in another direction when we already see what 
our final goal is. And what we're doing basically is deciding what we do like and what we don't like. And we're ending up making that into our reality from this dream, from this consciousness experiencing our third dimensional reality. We're making that into our reality, which will be the new earth. So don't be afraid to say what you like, what you don't like. Even if you hate this video or you like this video, it doesn't matter. This is all part of our co-creation process of what we're going through. So I think I can leave it off there. I thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. And I hope to uh, hopefully, please share my stuff too. Share all the stuff that you like that has anything to do with spirituality. Like I said, not just from my site, from everyone's site. Um, do me a favor right now. Just copy the link to N5D and post it on your Facebook page. Let's flood Facebook with N5D and see what, what that does to Facebook. I wonder if that changes their algorithms at all. Anyway, I'll leave it off at that. Thank you so much. I love you all so very much. Thank you for joining me and uh, namaste everyone.